Hey guys, what's going on? Dr. Natty here from Myokinetic Physical Therapy and Performance. If you're watching this video, I know you just heard your knee, you're about to get your ACL surgery or your meniscus surgery. I know it's devastating and I know it sucks because you're gonna be in a lot of pain and right now you just wanna go back to the field and be able to play your sport. But we're here because I wanna show you the first step of your recovery. So that way you can actually get back to your game and you can actually start thriving on your own terms. So I'm gonna show you in this video what I show all my high level athletes from professional college to high school, what they need to do to get their range of motion back, especially in the knee flexion. So let's get into it. All right, so the first step of any knee surgeries, we wanna get your range of motion back. The hardest thing to get in the beginning is to get your knee flexion back, which is your ability to do this, right? So I have a couple things I can show you today that you can do it on your own at home when you're not in PT, okay? So all you're gonna need is a bed, a towel, or a plastic bag, and a belt, something that you can hang on to, okay? So first thing first, what you're gonna do, you're gonna find a comfortable place, you're gonna put a towel underneath right here right so slide a lot easier and all you're gonna do get a strap or a belt or a towel that you can loop around here so all you're gonna do you're gonna slowly use your arms to actually pull your knees up to get in a comfortable range of motion here so my gauge of pain is four out of ten anything past that your brain gonna start locking up and start fighting back right so we want to build that tolerance at a four out of ten no more than that right so first week if you're coming out and you can only get this much in knee flexion, that's fine. I want you to hold that for 10 seconds and then slowly slide your way back down again. And you're gonna do this 30 reps. And I want you to do this as many times as you can throughout the day, in the beginning, right? And if your bed is a little bit sticky, you can actually use plastic bag instead of the towel. So that way you can slide a lot, a lot better. So, if you have knee surgery like ACL, meniscus tear, or even a knee replacement, you can use the same strategy for the same thing. Hold for 10 seconds, come back down, come back, hold it, come back down. As you can see, I don't need this towel on this, on this table because I have my socks on. And I'm gonna do this until I get to the highest pain tolerance I can, which is a four out of 10. And as you're doing this, what's great about this is that the more you move, the less swelling you're gonna have on your knee, right? So you're actually killing two birds with one stone. Now, some of you, you're in a lot of pain and you feel like your incision is gonna pop, right? I can tell you right now, it's not gonna happen. Your surgeon did a great job making sure that all the stitches are there. It's gonna be uncomfortable because you feel like you're ripping stitches open. That's not gonna happen, okay? So you're just gonna keep doing this throughout the day as much as you can. And as a pro tip, if you have a meniscus repair, you might have range of motion restriction, which means you can't go past 90 degrees. So you wanna to listen to that until you get clear to go all the way up. So you're gonna do this throughout the day until you can go as high as you can and come back. This is the first step where I tell people to actually stack small wins. You wanna have a win journal where you can actually say, hey, I was able to get up at this amount and the best way I like to gauge is I bend this knee as much as I can. This is my highest range of motion within this knee and I wanna compare how close I am with this knee to this knee. So that way you can document your wins because otherwise you're gonna feel like you're not doing anything as much, right? Even though doing a little bit of something is better than nothing. Now, if you have an inclined bed like this that you can lift up, guess what? You can do exact same thing, put your foot up here. I'm gonna show you guys. So I'm gonna flip over this way and I'm gonna show you with my other knee. So from here, I get to lay down this way, right? And because I have an incline, I get to use the incline to help me get even more range of motion at the same time. So from here, I can go from here and bring this down this way. As you can see with the incline, I get more knee flexion that way. So this is the advanced version. And if you have access to incline, I would do this throughout the day as well, right? I always aim for 30 reps and as many times as you can throughout the day. All right, that's our first exercise. Okay, next one is a really good exercise you can do at home or at school if you end up going to school because you're gonna be sitting a lot. So when you sit, your knee's gonna get stiff and I hear it all the time when all my high school athletes come in, they're like, hey, I'm actually losing range of motion because I've been sitting all day. I say, you know what? I got something for you. So this is what you guys are gonna do when you're at home or at school. If you're sitting down, your leg is dangling a little bit, 
what you can do is you can use the other leg to assist you to get more knee flexion. So what I mean by that is that you're gonna use this leg, bring this over, and you're gonna slowly kick this back. As you can see, I get more range of motion this way. I will warn you though, because if you're sitting in the position you're in, because you're in hip flexion here, your quad is lengthened. When you do this, you're gonna feel a lot of pulling in the front of the knee, which is normal. Nothing is gonna rip, but again, Use the same rule of thumb that we've been talking about. It's four out of 10 pain. You want to keep that there. So I'm going to slowly bring this in using only this leg. And I'm just going to hold that for 10 seconds. And then come back. Hold this for 10 seconds. Then come back. Right? Again, do this throughout your class as you're sitting as much as you can. So that way you have some motion. Right? What we say here in myokinetics is motion is lotion. So you want to keep moving as much as you can. And the more you move, the less swelling you're going to have. And again, in between set, you can still use your ankle pumps, making sure that you get all the blood flow up towards your heart. So that way you can decrease some swelling as well. And here's another thing. First week, your knee is going to be swollen. You're going to be in a lot of pain. Guess what? The more you keep doing this, the better it's going to get. It will get better, right? Your first week is just going to feel like the worst one. By the next four weeks, as you keep doing this, you're going to surprise yourself and say like, oh, wow, I can't believe I came this far. So you're gonna do this throughout the day. And for those who have knee replacement, this is gonna be a huge one for you guys. So do this throughout the day. Use the other leg to help you. Same thing, 30 reps, three to six times throughout the day. And once you get your range of motion back and you actually clear to put some weight on your surgical leg, we can actually do more stuff to actually help you maintain that range of motion you have. So let's move on to the next one. So the next one, is the best kept secret, right? So what I'm gonna teach you is to create internal rotation within your knees. You can see you have the knee joint right here. So for your knee to bend more, you need a little bit of internal rotation at the joint in order for it to bend. So when you feel like your knee is stuck because you can't bend anymore, like something is stopping it there, it could be your joint at your tibia. So what I'm gonna teach you is how to create that internal rotation at home on your own, right? So you can put your foot on top of a couch or a bench, whatever it is where you feel comfortable. You're gonna place your hand on the inner knee hands on the outside. So this is where your joint line is. You wanna put your hands right here. You see how I interlock my finger? And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slowly rotate it inwards as I'm leaning forward. So I get more knee flexion there. So you're gonna rotate your tibia and then come forward. And I want you to do this 15 to 20 reps here, okay? Throughout the day. So what that's gonna do is gonna help the joint loosen up at the knee so that way you get more knee flexion. And as you're doing this, you get to put some weight into your knee so you learn what it feels like to actually load your knee in flexion. So that way, when you go to do box squat or any squat variation, you feel more confident. And if this table is too high, go somewhere lower. We can actually do this. And again, if you have incision around here, I don't want to put my hand on the incision, okay? And again, 15 reps minimum. And as I'm coming forward, I rotate inner. There you go. And another thing too that I always cue my patients to do is as you're loading here, you should feel your muscle activating and you can slowly push away as well. So this is one of my favorite things to teach my patients to do as early as possible. All right, so you went over three exercises and now let's go to the next two. This one's gonna be weight bearing. So you wanna make sure you actually get clear by your surgeon. You can put weight on your surgical leg. Okay, so the next one, now that you got more range of motion, your knee flexion, I'm gonna teach you how to keep it by loading it slowly, okay? So the best way to keep your range of motion is slowly strengthen it, get your muscle actually activated, get you to feel comfortable, right? We're talking about stacking small wins here. So you wanna feel more comfortable and you wanna load more in that knee range of motion. So if you don't have anything at home, you find something to hang on to. So I just use the squat rack that we have here. And all you're gonna do, you're gonna reach forward here and all you're gonna do is slowly sit into a squat and I like to walk my way down, right? If I can walk down, I'm gonna hold that right there. So I'm gonna load this here. Pro tip with this is that you wanna make sure you're not shifting your weight to the other side. You wanna keep that weight even because that's gonna be very, very important, right? You're gonna hold that there, load, and then you're gonna slowly walk your way back up, right? And you're gonna slowly walk your way back down. Remember, we want four out of 10 pain, right? So if you can hang out here at four out of 10, hold that there for 10 seconds and then slowly work your way back up. And as you come up, think about squeezing your quads here, okay? Come back down, try to get as slow as you can, right? Remember, the arms are doing all the work for you and you're just using your legs to hold everything up. 
and then come back up. And again, we're gonna do this. Let's go sets of eight to 10 and you're holding 10 seconds because you haven't lowered your legs in so long, you're gonna feel tired and you're gonna feel your legs shaking. And the goal is to keep sinking lower and lower to the point where you can get to this position and you can just hang out here and you can get that full range of motion right there. So that's our goal. We wanna keep working towards that. If you can get here within the next four to six weeks, that'll be huge for you guys. Right there, you wanna get load, but also even weight distribution as well. Next one, what we're gonna do, we're gonna work on that in range knee flexion. We really want you to get full range of motion while you're able to load. Some of the best trick that I use is with this drill right here. So you're gonna need a towel like this, just fold it up. And all you're gonna do, you're gonna place this right behind your knee, right? So we call this technique gapping. What we're trying to gap the back of the knee so that we can create space in the knee joint itself so that way you get more range of motion. So all you're gonna do, put this right here, have a pad on the other knee, and all you're gonna do, slowly reach down, pretend like you're about to start in a race right there, and you're gonna slowly sit down, just like so. Because the towel's behind here, you can actually put more weight into this hip. You're gonna little sit down, get more range of motion just like that, okay? We're gonna hold that there for five to 10 seconds and then come back up. And then each time you're gonna try to sink lower and lower. And if you don't feel the gap with the towel, you can make the towel thicker by rolling it more. As I'm doing this, I can get more comfortable. Notice I keep moving that back leg forward so I can sing in lower. And this is something I actually do for myself before I squat because I want a good range of motion here. And the key is to try to keep your heel flat as well. So I'm gonna hold five seconds, come back up and then come back down, hold for another five. I can rock forward a little bit as well just to get more range of motion there. Come back up and then come back down. 10 to 15 reps three to four sets with this one. When you can do this, the bonus one that I'm gonna teach you guys is probably the hardest one, but it's really, really good for you to get your range of motion back. All you're gonna do, get the knee pad, you're gonna move from this, take the towel out. And this is really good if you can actually kneel down on your knee. If you still have scar pain sensitivity, I don't recommend you this towards the end where you don't have that sensation in front of the knee anymore. All you're gonna do, get something to support. Again, if you can kneel down directly, if you have a pad, you see how my knee is not touching the pad, it's actually in front. So you can actually stack up pillows, right? If you have pain here, so you can't kneel on that. You wanna kneel down right here, okay? And all you're gonna do, use this arm to help you and you're gonna slowly just sink down, slowly. And you're gonna hold that for, again, five to 10 seconds. Come back up, use your arm to help you. Come back down. The goal is to gauge if your butt can actually touch your heels. And when you do this long enough, you make this part of your routine, you can eventually get to this point where you can actually get a full flexion right here, right? Because that's what we want. We want you to be able to have full range of motion without pain. So that way you can keep progressing with your rehab and you can keep moving on to the next phase of your rehab. So this is part of our beginning stage of our ACL rehab, of our return to play program, is to be able to get your range of motion back. These are exercises you can do at home and I highly recommend you do this every single day. The pain level is four out of 10, do not push more than that. And at some point, you're gonna get to this point. This is the end goal that I wanna see you guys at. This is the end goal that I want all of our athletes that walk into here in MyConnects to get to. If you guys have achieved this, you know, mobility and your knee flexion, guess what? We have two other videos for you. So the first one is gonna be your quad strengthening exercises, which is up here. And then the other one is gonna be your body weight training exercise you can do at home without any weight, which is on this side. So I hope you guys enjoy this one. And when you're done with this, give us a like, a share and subscribe.